The 1960 National 400 was the second NASCAR Grand National race at Charlotte Motor Speedway, a track that has now been on the schedule for over 60 years. The National 400 was the 42nd round of the 1960 season, which accompanied the larger World 600 event at the track held just a few months prior. Still, nearly 30,000 fans flocked back to the Speedway for the National 400 to watch the country's 50 best stock car racers do battle at one of the fastest tracks in the United States. Seven cautions flew for 34 laps, but there was not an accident near as major as the one that occurred on lap 90. Lenny Page lost control of his vehicle, slammed the guardrail, then was T-boned by another driver. After suffering many broken bones, a concussion, and notably a large cut in his neck, medical crews had to act fast to save his life. But before medical staff could arrive on the scene, Lenny Page was lucky that an unlikely journalist hero was just feet from the accident. Right before the video starts, make sure you guys subscribe so you never miss an amazing NASCAR story. We're on our way to 75,000 subscribers and on a journey to uncover lost stories in NASCAR's history. Anyway, let's get right into the video. So, let's set the scene for the race. This was the 42nd of 44 races during the 1960 season. The championship was locked up for Rex White, who had essentially won the championship coming into the race. This was in large part thanks to his back-to-back -back wins right before Charlotte at Martinsville and North Wilkesboro, while Richard Petty had two pretty rough races. By the end of the season, White would finish nearly 4,000 points ahead of Petty in the standings, who was in second place. With the championship out of reach, every driver just wanted to come in and win this race, which paid out very well compared to other races. For comparison, the purse for the Daytona 500 was $63,000, while the National 400 was $46,000. And this was a really competitive season. Eight drivers had piled up three or more wins, while 16 drivers had won at least a single race. Heading into race day, the usual suspects were favorites. Pole winner Fireball Roberts was going to be the driver to beat but race winners Jack Smith, Rex White, Joe Weatherly, and Bobby Johns all qualified in the top six. Another driver that qualified well was Speedy Thompson, driving for the Wood Brothers. And I have to say, this is the coolest nickname for a driver ever. Alfred Bruce, or Speedy, would win 20 races in his career. Twelve years after this race, Thompson would pass away during a late model race on Easter Sunday. He suffered a seizure during the race, crashed into the guardrail, and was pronounced dead upon arrival to a nearby hospital. But back to the 1960 National 400. Soon after the green flag, competitive drivers started to drop out of the race. Joe Weatherly, who started 5th, went out of the race on lap 22 when he crashed. Jack Smith, who led early on, crashed out on lap 60. Later in the race, Fireball Roberts crashed out of the lead on lap 232, handing the race to Speedy Thompson. Thompson won by over a lap over Richard Petty. Overall, it was a tough race just to make it to the finish. Of the 50 drivers who started, only half finished the race. There were 7 cautions for a total of 34 laps. But the largest wreck of the race took place on lap 90, involving Lenny Page and Don O'Dell. And right before we get to the focal accident of this video, we need to talk about Chris Economaki. He was a pioneer in racing, but just as a journalist, publisher, reporter, and commentator. He's commonly referred as the Dean of American Motorsports Journalism. Chris was the editor, publisher, and columnist for National Speed Sports News for more than 60 years. A weekly racing publication, he began selling at racetracks at the age of 14. He became a TV commentator, where he was deemed the voice of American motorsports. He covered massive races, like the Daytona 500, Indy 500, 24 Hours of Le Mans, and the Bathurst 1000. The guy was just everywhere you looked, and made motorsports all around the world more enjoyable for many Americans. This short segment really does not do him justice, but if you are unfamiliar with him, he's a legend in American motorsports. On the 90th lap of the race, Lenny Page's 1959 Thunderbird spun out in the fourth turn, hit the guardrail head-on, 
and then was T-boned by Don O'Dell. The two cars then slid to the bottom of the track. The crash ended within feet of Chris Economaki, who was taking photos trackside for National Speed Sports News. Chris noticed that Odell was not seriously injured, but quickly noticed Paige, who was wedged in his mangled machine. Paige's head was resting on the window opening, while blood was gushing from a massive cut at the base of his neck. Chris removed his shirt and stuffed Paige's wound with it, reducing the blood leaving Paige's body. He held this position until medical crews arrived, who were quickly able to treat him. Now, a 1961 article states that the medical staff put a tourniquet around his neck, but that would reduce the blood flow to your brain and kill you very quickly. So the medical staff probably packed the wound or applied pressure with a cloth, but regardless, they were able to get Paige in a stable enough condition to transport him. Paige was then transferred to Presbyterian Hospital, where he was reported in serious condition. He suffered a concussion, several broken ribs, and a severe neck cut. The next day, Paige's condition was better after he came out of shock and was listed in fair condition. And that day, Chris was a hero. For saving Paige's life, he was presented with a special merit award during the 1961 Speed Weeks at the NASCAR Victory Dinner. The award was described as a large, handsome, and living cup suitably engraved. The award was presented by President Curtis Turner on behalf of Charlotte Motor Speedway. Now, I've had a hard time finding information about Page's recovery, but I did find an article in 1961 from the Herald Journal. It stated that after a long hospitalization, Page is now recovering at his home in Buffalo, New York. So this statement came about six months after the accident. Page no doubt had a long recovery and he never raced in the Grand National Series again. So from the quote, it sounds like he may have been in the hospital for a few months, and then was transported back home, but he still needed to recover. It is known that Page did eventually recover from his injuries. After doing so, Chris received a letter from Lenny Page, thanking him for saving his life. Now, I want to talk about a couple major misconceptions about this crash. 95% of newer articles, including ones from reputable sources, and even some of Chris's biographies state that this crash occurred during the 1960 World 600, not the National 400. So if you want to read more about the accident on your own, know that it did not take place during the World 600. Even Racing Reference shows the 1960 National 400 as Lenny Page's last race. Older articles written at the time all say it happened during the National 400. Also, these newer articles make other claims like Chris administered CPR to Page rather than clogging his wound. Now, I can't confirm or deny this, but based on the credibility of the articles, it's probably not true. All the facts that I used in the story in this video were compiled through various newspaper archives written at the time or shortly after the accident, with not many discrepancies, so I believe they are much more credible. But anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope you did enjoy. I know it was a shorter video, it's a shorter story, but I still wanted to talk about it. So if you did enjoy, make sure you guys let me know down in the comments below and leave a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.